Hey there guys, Neil here, back with a first look and impressions of the OnePlus 3T, which was announced on November, or released on the no on November 22nd and announced the week before. So to get, to get the first things out of the way as far as specs go, it, um, pro or it offers an improvement in processor from the OnePlus 3. So, an, uh, so the OnePlus 3 has a Snapdragon 821, the 3T comes with the Snapdragon 821 processor. Um, both still have six gigs of RAM, but the 3T now offers a hundred, uh, 128 gigabyte model. So if you're willing to spend $40 more, you can get double the storage. So it's up, I'll leave it to you as far as if that, um, extra storage is worth the price. Um, it still runs Android 6.0.1. So at the, from last I heard the, um, community build was going to roll out. If you want an early look by the end of November, 2016 to, for the Android uh, seven NuGet update, um, and then a full rollout by the end of 2016. But I haven't heard too much um, be after that, so we'll see exactly what happens. Um, and then on a side note, you still have the in-app game for Marshmallow. So if you don't really play games but um, want something to do, there is that. Um, so it's good that they left that in. Um, as far as UI, it's mostly just stock, so you have your Wi-Fi controls, um, you have your Bluetooth, so whatever device that you need to connect. It does offer dual SIM support, so if you have a work and personal number, for example, then you can put both, uh, both SIMs in one device and use them both. And then it supports over voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling. Um, and then it does have offer tethering and portable hotspot hot support, has an NFC um, support, tap to pay, and all of that good stuff. Um, it does offer an alert slider, so if you want to easily switch between silent, do not disturb, and re uh, normal ring modes, you can easily do that. And toggle, for example, in silent mode to silence your media and enable or disable vibration. Do not disturb basically lets you customize what um, alerts still come through. So, for example, if you want your reminders and events and only starred contacts to be able to reach you, then um, you can basically select those options and um, set all of those. And then um, pulsing your notification light if you're going to have it on your desk, for example. Um, you can also enable and disable the navigation bar. So if you want your on-screen buttons, you can have that. Or if you use Pi controls, then um, basically you can turn off the navigation bar so it doesn't get in the way. And then you can also swap the back and recent button. So depending on your um, the preferred location of the two buttons, you can change those. Um, and then, for example, long pressing the home button will um, turn, enable the Google Assistant or turn um start that up i'm not sure why it's grayed out just yet so i'm not sure if it's a feature that's coming soon or if there's a particular um oh actually that's all i or you can turn it on to change what the home button does but i'm not sure why the back and recent button are unable to be um customized so that's something i still have to look into um, you can also customize your screen off gesture. So, for example, if you want to double tap your screen to wake your device, you can um, enable that. The 3T has a fingerprint sensor, so you can um, unlock your device with your thumbprint if you want to um, do use that. So that's what I use, actually. And then I still have the security lock screen enabled. So even though I un unlocked it with my thumb, I still need to um, swipe the screen so if anyone tries to still unlock my device then there's off there's still that security step in the middle um you can open the camera by drawing an o toggle turn on the flash by, by drawing a v um turn on your music by drawing two lines um and then take a screenshot by swiping down on your screen with three fingers so um pretty much just um so um I haven't really gotten used to how much I need to drag my fingers down. Um, so, but basically just like that, you'll have your usual flash. And then there's a pocket mode. So um, if you're pulling your finger out of your, or your phone out of your pocket and your fingers touch the screen, then it's going to kind of protect your screen so it doesn't push any buttons. Um, and then the usual uh, display settings that are available for Marshmallow. So adaptive brightness based on the sensor. I have in my phone set to turn off after 10 minutes, but you can have, um, 15 seconds to 30 minutes as your option. A night mode, which basically flips the UI or adjusts the blue light um, on your screen so you can um, adjust the intensity of that if you want. 
there's there are three themes a default light and dark so if you want a darker mode then you have that available um you can adjust the font size um there's also ambient display so you can when you're when you receive a notification then um your screen will turn on um and then proximity wake so if you don't want to touch your device but you still want to see what notifications you have you can uh, wave your hand over your screen um sounds and notifications pretty much straightforward there um and what um per app options you want there um that's pretty much the bulk of the de what the device's additional ui offers so um, as far as a home screen, it is pretty straightforward. You have a traditional home screen, lock or long pressing on it will allow you to um, get tight and change your wallpaper and add widgets. You can um, add three or two different kinds of um, quick search widgets. I have it set to none, uh, which I use because I use the action launcher. So I'll get to that in a second. There's also a shelf quick search option and quick notifications option. So I'll get to the shelf in a second. And then it also supports icon packs. So if you have a custom icon pack installed, then you can um, uh, use that. And then, for example, there's dives um, and a uh, Rifon icon pack. So, for example, if you want a circular icon pack, then I'll, we can actually do that. So I'll hit save. Um, and then it'll update all your icons to be circular. So... Um, actually, I will keep it at that just because it looks like it did a good job. As far as the shelf goes, basically, if you use the uh, launchers like Action Launcher, then you, if, when you do a swipe, you have that quick page in Action Launcher, for example. So um, at the top left of the screen, you can have a greeting. The stock greeting is never settled, and then you can have uh, weather information in there as well. So if you, um, the 3T comes with the weather app so once you set that up to detect based on your location the shelf will give you a weather updates there and then you can put a greeting here for example like hello world and the hello world shows up and then you can add whatever widgets you want so it comes or it comes default but with memo recent contacts and recent apps so if you want a quick um way to take a note then you can set that if you have a custom widgets that you want to add, then uh, whatever is installed on your device can be set up. So, for example, I want let's say I want my Google Fit wid uh, widget. Um, you, it'll set up there as I think a two by three or two by two or four by two something along those lines. Long pressing will allow you to um, adjust the size of it so it fits, and then swiping uh, uh, from the left side to the right side of your screen will delete the um widget so that's the bulk of the u as far as launcher ui goes so uh, once you set up if you don't have any other preferences for what your launcher does then you're pretty much all set to go um i am actually using um action launcher as my um preferred um launcher because um, I want to have additional swipe options for my home screen or for what apps launch when I swipe on my phone. So when I swipe from left to right, I can um, open the default camera, which offers auto HDR mode, HDR and no HDR. And then there's also a high, Q pic high quality picture mode, um, which disables um, HDR. Um, and then the stock camera offers time lapse, slow motion, video, manual, and panorama. So if you want to adjust, for example, all the various uh, features of your picture, um, then you can easily make those adjustments. Um, pretty much simple as far as things like that go. And then you can turn on and off your grid line, set a timer, and your aspect ratio of the picture. And then uh, right to left opens my gallery, so I don't need a two or I don't need additional icons on my home screen for that. And then with Action Launcher, I have my quick bar at the top and quick screen or uh, quick theme, so based on the wallpaper, so I have those colors set up there. And at the moment, I'm just using Material Dark, uh, actually for that matter, um, just because to keep it simple and keep the dark um, navigation bar or the dark quick bar and notification bar um, at one color um, and then to get the android 7 um, app door early i have it swiped from my um, dock so i can easily um, um, open my drawer app drawer just by swiping up and down so um, the final thing though is that i can 
like for example, with the double tap to unlock my device with that um, setting enabled, there is actually no double tap to lock my device within the stock um, UI experience for the OnePlus 3T and Oxygen OS. I don't know if it's that's a, if that's a feature that's coming soon or that's something that they'll implement later or maybe not at all. But um, Action Launcher does offer that. So if you go into your Action Launcher settings um, and you go into shortcuts, you can um, tap your empty space to double or double tap the empty space on your device to lock your device. Um, it does require an action launcher to be a device administrator. So um, if you're okay with that, then you once you enable that, then um, you can double tap to lock your device and then turn on the option in the settings menu for your want 3T and double tap your screen to unlock your device. So a pretty nifty workaround there if you want to um, have that double tap option. So that kind of works for me. And then you have other swipe gestures as well to expand on what the OnePlus 3T does on the lock screen. So single finger action three settings, multiple finger system settings, notifications. Um, and then as you can see, swiping horizontal opens my default camera and gallery apps. Um, so that's basically the bulk of the device. Um, UI overall battery life has been pretty good. Um, I charged it up to 100% when I started. Um, migrating my apps from my uh, Fire Phone was pretty straightforward. It does offer NFC transfer, but because I have um, a custom ROM on it, and I'm not sure exactly how if it was able to read it or not or what happened, but I wasn't able to um, automatically load onto my 3T from my Fire Phone by NFC. So if you have, let's say, a um, stock ROM or whatever on your Galaxy Note, Galaxy S7, I don't want to say Note 7, but Galaxy S7 or a Pixel or a Nexus or whatever, then I'm guessing that you can transfer um, automatically by NFC. But if you decide to skip that step, um, it does later offer an option once you sign into your Google account to import apps from another device. So I was able to pick my Fire Phone there. It lists all the apps that are that were previously synced. To my account on my fire phone and i was able to uncheck any apps that i don't need anymore or don't want to install on my 3t and um from there it basically finished the setup it installed all of those apps i updated them all and i was good to go i just had to go in and log into everything and then there was also a ui update or sorry a device update as well by the time um, i got my device so um, actually, it was basically just um, bug fixes and things like that. So uh, motion detection in the camera, better ca image qu capture quality, the OnePlus community app, things like that. So um, I installed that. And I think basically out of all that, I'm sure a lot of that was a drain, especially the system update. So I was down to like 65%. But the quick charge or the device, OnePlus 3T does support the um, quick charge. Um, so uh, basically the, when I got my device, it was at 58% in about an hour, hour and a half, I think it was up to a hundred percent. I had, did have to go out and come back and I did a few other things. So it might've been less than that, but essentially the claims for the quick charge are, um, actually pretty, I want to say pretty spot on. I mean, I can be at whatever charge I'm at 84% right now, for example, and, um, once I get, let's say I want to charge once I'm at 50% or I'm going to get ready to leave in half an hour, I can charge up the device by the time I leave, it'll be, um, up to 100%. So, um, overall it's the claims for the device are pretty good. Um, so I enjoy the device. I'm actually going to uh, look, poke around for, um, a few of the customization options, um, see what, um check about those customizing the home back and recents button and also see if i can get on the community build for the android 7 update or um or see what the status on that is see if see how that's uh, coming along um but at the moment the way things are going um it looks like i don't um much like or unlike prior devices that i've owned notably the samsung captivate the HTC One M7 and the Amazon Fire Phone. It doesn't look like at the moment I'm going to need to um, root and ROM this device. I do have that option to up to move it over to CyanogenMod if I um, so desire, which is, has been my ROM of choice. But as it stands now, I actually 
don't really need to do any other customization or um, have the additional features that ROMing um, supports. So that is actually all there is for that. So um, as time goes on and additional things happen or there's uh, tips and tricks or things that I see that are actually pretty good for the device or things to um, update on the device or things that I can mess around with that it offers that are not necessarily available on other devices, I'll share that as they come along. But that is all for this particular uh, review. Thanks for watching and listening and until next time.